The following is an excerpt from the full-length instructional video, Anybody Can Kayak, River Running. All of life has risks. Anytime we get in a car, we risk injury or death in an accident. If we watch too much TV, we risk poor health. If we whitewater kayak, we risk injuries or drowning. Before you kayak, realize that the risk of injury is real. And if you aren't willing to accept the risk, don't do it. Fortunately though, life has ways to decrease or minimize risks. In a car, we can wear a seatbelt, pay attention, drive sober, and drive at reasonable speeds. We can exercise while watching TV and we can greatly minimize the risks of kayaking by following some simple safety guidelines, which we'll get to in a minute. We won't be able to totally eliminate risk, but we can at least stack the odds in our favor. While filming this video, we stumbled across a woman who ignored pretty much every safety tip we're about to give you. She got in the river and tipped over almost immediately. Her arms and legs were flopping like a rag doll as she tumbled out of control. She was so cold and exhausted, she couldn't follow my simple directions. Finally, she held on to my grab loop and I could start to tow her. There were miles of continuous rapids below, and the only reason she's alive is because a skilled kayaker appeared out of nowhere to save her. Before you get in a kayak, you need to decide if you want to be skilled and prepared and follow safety guidelines, or if you want to be like this woman. We will talk about safety and minimizing risk throughout the rest of the video, but here's a good starting list. One. We can decrease risk by being realistic deciding which rivers and rapids we run. The more we're out of control, or upside down, or swimming, the more likely we are to run into a hazard, bonk our head, or get hypothermia. The woman in her video would have been okay on a nice metal float, but she shouldn't have been on this river. We can decrease risk by using the proper equipment. Our PFD should fit tight so it can't pull up over our head. Our helmet should cover the back of our head, the front of our head, and it should stay in place if it gets jostled. We should have warm clothes, and we might have a whistle, throw rope, knife, food, water, and a first aid kit. The woman in the video had no PFD, no helmet, and no warm clothes. Three. We can decrease risk by learning to roll and by practicing our roll. The woman in our video did not roll up. We can decrease risk by practicing the skills taught in this DVD. We doubt the woman in the video had learned and practiced many skills. Five, we can decrease risk by running rivers with a good sharp mind and avoiding alcohol and drugs in the river. Six, we can decrease risk by boating with someone. They may get us out of a jam or chase down our equipment. Seven, we can decrease risk by going to a doctor and getting a physical. Kayaking is a strenuous sport. Eight, we can decrease risk by taking kayak lessons. Nine, we can decrease risk by taking a swift water rescue course. 10, we can reduce risk by keeping our shoulders low and in their sockets every minute while we're in our kayak. This is bad, but this is better. Okay, this is bad, and this is better. Okay, this is bad, and this is better. And this is bad, and this is better. Let's pause and point out that many of the safety tips in this video aren't all that hard. It's not hard to put on a PFD or helmet. 
It's not hard to vote with someone. It's not hard to get a physical. It's not hard to take lessons or a swift water rescue course. A few simple steps will go a long ways towards keeping yourself safe. Okay, now the 11th way to decrease risk is to avoid river hazards. Identifying and avoiding river hazards is one of the biggest ways to keep yourself safe. So we're going to spend some time on them. There are many different types of river hazards. Fortunately, we don't have any good pictures of our friends caught and dying in them. So you're going to have to use your imagination a bit to understand them. Well, let's start by looking at this kayak caught in tree branches. These branches are called strainers. It's not so bad if it's just a kayak caught in a strainer, but if it was your kayak and the water were higher and you were caught in it with your head held under water for a couple hours, it'd spoil your day. Now look closely at this garbage which is accumulated in these small trees at higher water. If the branches were bigger, it could be you getting held by the branches at high water. Here are several more strainers. Always stay away from trees, branches, and logs. On most rivers, they're the most common form of hazard. Fortunately, they're usually fairly easy to spot. Here are undercut rocks. Note the way the current flows under the rocks. If the current pushed a kayak under these rocks and the person got wedged under the rocks, this would be bad. Here's another picture of an undercut. Note the way the current floats into the rocks, disappears, then reappears on the other side of the rock. We don't know if it's just a small crack or if it's going to hold a person. Closely related to undercuts are sieves, where water is pushed through porous rock. Don't expect to ever see a sieve. I've never seen one in my whole life. But if somebody tells you there's a sieve, then stay away. Here's a raft pinned upside down between two rocks. Again, not so bad if it's just the raft pinned upside down, but if you are caught in it, it could be bad. The most common type of pin is where a kayak goes over a drop, pitons against a rock on the bottom, and is wedged in place by rocks on each side. The pressure of the water going over the kayaker pushes him forward and holds him in. Man-made dams are another type of river hazard. Even small dams can trap us. They look harmless, especially from above, but once you get to the base of one, the water circulates around and around, and there's no way out. Some rivers are filled with rafts, which may accidentally run us over and hold us under. Rope in the water can be a hazard, as it can wrap around us and hold us down. Occasionally, we can be trapped and held by large holes. We will come back and discuss this more once we understand what forms a hole, what makes a hole bad, and how to get out of holes. Big drops can be hazards. Nowadays, some big drops are being routinely run, but we personally know several people with serious injuries caused by them. Cold water can be a river hazard. Every year, some boaters die from a heart attack or hypothermia after a swim in cold water. High water can also be a hazard, as it swells the banks and forces us out into the trees and brush along the side, which can act as strainers. High water can also wipe out eddies, which are the places where we stop. We'll talk a lot about eddies later. Long, continuous rapids can be a hazard. If we swim and can't get ourselves out relatively quickly, we get exhausted, take in water, and get pounded by rocks. A long, continuous rapid in springtime when the water is high and cold can be a deadly combination. So, we've given you a long list of river hazards. Hopefully, we didn't scare you too much. It's not like one of our friends dies every time we go down a river. But, we have to scout, be alert, and use our heads. If we see a hazard or hear about a hazard, we go to the other side of the river, or we portage. Or if our river is filled with hazards, we pick a different river. Avoiding hazards isn't rocket science, but we've got to think about them and look for them. If you go down rivers with your head up your butt, it can get ugly. And one more thing. If you're under 18, the part of your brain which helps you process risk and danger hasn't fully developed yet. So even though you may be a better kayaker than your parents, you should accept their advice as to how and when to kayak 
and when and what to run. Many of the top pro kayakers started young and were under the veto power of their parents. This is medical fact here. We're not just blowing smoke. The stuff about brain development is proven science. So that's our starting list of safety tips. We'll be talking more about safety and minimizing risk throughout the DVD. But we're not smart enough to think of everything. And there's probably something unique or different on your river. So keep your eyes open and use your head. And realize that no matter how careful we are while driving a car, a drunk driver can cross the center line and kill us. And no matter how much we exercise, we may still get sick and die. No matter how careful we are on the river, we can still have a freak accident. If you aren't ready to take risks, then don't get in a kayak. If you like this instruction, you can cover a lot more topics with the full four hour Anybody Can Kayak River Running or any of our other videos. Available at anybodycankayak.com.